Good morning and welcome to Daybreak. I'm Kelsey Metzger. And I'm Chris Hoffman. Coming up on Daybreak, we'll see the art that's being used for practical purposes around town. And Daybreak took a presidential visit to the White House and we have your weather for the week ahead. Daybreak starts right now. <laughs> Started to feel a lot more like fall out there as the week came to a close last week, Kelsey. That's right, Chris. And now Alex is here with our morning weather. Alex, do students need to take a jacket out with them this morning when they head out to class? Well, this morning it's going to be partly cloudy with a low of 46, so temperatures are definitely dropping, but there's only a 10% chance of rain. We'll take a look at your five-day forecast later in the show, but right now let's send it over to Caroline Collins, who has the headlines that are sweeping the nation. Thanks, Alex. American airstrikes against ISIS may not be an end-all solution. The U.S. Army's chief of staff spoke Wednesday about ISIS for the first time. He says that American military stands ready to respond by whatever means necessary. The president has stressed that there will be no American combat troops in Iraq, but that was made unclear by the top military advisor who says he might recommend combat troops if current measures are not working. The Silverado Canyon fire burning since last Friday is now 91 percent contained. This fire that has burned more than 1,500 acres apparently started by the sheet metal reflecting the sun in efforts to keep rodents out of someone's garden. Over a thousand firefighters work to contain the flames. Voters have lined the outside of polling stations in Scotland. Both excitement and apprehension filled the Scottish voters who, be, who began an independent, who are becoming an independent state. This would dissolve their union with England. Pools predict the result was too close to call. The future of the 307-year-old union with England was to be decided in 15, in 15 hours of voting. Polling stations were extremely busy and turnout was expected to be high with more than 4.2 million people registered to vote. Citizens as young as age 16 can vote. Storms are sweeping the nation as another storm system parts as another storm system goes through Austin, Texas, and several parts of it are underwater. Several rescuers were reported in Texas after people have become trapped on or inside their vehicles. The flooded streets, the, the flooded streets, um, the Southwest also continues to feel the effects from the hurricane that slammed into Mexico earlier this week. The New Mexico and Western Texas residents were warned to stay inside their homes as rains from the Aldi storm system flooded the area and brought the risk of dangerous debris filled flash floods. For the third consecutive year in a row, Miss New York has been crowned Miss America. This is the first time in Miss America history that a state has won three years in a row. Kira Kazantsev, who won the crown, singing happy Pharrell Williams' song and kept the beat with a red cup sitting on the floor. Hashtag Miss America became the number one trending topic of the night of the competition. 20 years ago, President Bill Clinton graduated the first class of AmeriCorps. This month, President Clinton joined President Obama to celebrate the class of 2014. Daybreak reporter Tyler Jetski was in Washington, D.C. for the ceremony. Today, the 20th anniversary of AmeriCorps was celebrated by the swearing in of the 2014 class by President Obama and former President Bill Clinton on the South Lawn of the White House. The 45-minute ceremony included much fanfare. The message of the day was that the future of community service in America is bright. Look, Look at, at the, the rainbow, rainbow of diversity, diversity united to advance our common humanity. humanity. That, that is, is the secret of our future. future. AmeriCorps is a government-funded civil service organization that connects thousands of people every year with community service projects across the nation. 75,000 members of this year's AmeriCorps class will spread out across the country. And they are doing their part to help make America safer and healthier and more fair and more just. In 1994, President Bill Clinton presided over the swearing-in of the very first AmeriCorps class. Both presidents since then have continued to fund the group. And during President Obama's speech on this day, he made the call to Congress to once again fund AmeriCorps. We are determined to help AmeriCorps succeed. We've seen the outcomes that AmeriCorps members produce, improved literacy in the schools where they work. So if we're smart, Congress will fund this calling. 
900,000 volunteers have given 1.2 billion hours of community service, and Obama is pushing for more funding for AmeriCorp so that they can continue keep getting things done. Reporting from the North Lawn of the White House, for Point News, I'm Tyler Jeske. All right, now we take you from the federal level to the state level. That's right, Kelsey, as once again, James Hill joins us to talk about the candidates for the governorship. Yeah. Chris and Kelsey, that's right. We have a lot going on in the state. Well, first off, Pennsylvania. They've borrowed $700 million from a line of credit that was established by Treasurer Rob McCord on Monday. The first time that's been done this early in the fiscal years in almost 14 years. And we're going to get to that in a little second. A little things you need to know about that is they borrowed actually $700 million from that. If you take the graph here real quick, you see right now we're running actually with a $29.1 billion budget. So while $700 million is a very large number, it's actually nothing more than a drop in, a, in the bucket, excuse me, compared to what we're dealing with. However, it's already pretty split out in Harrisburg. One of the things that I think is really dramatic, and Chris, we were talking about this a little earlier. Now, uh, Robert uh, Pasquale, excuse me, he was one of the key people out in Harrisburg. He actually called that this isn't a crisis, and he actually said, uh, Rob McCourt, the other guy, however, he said it was actually more liking to the second reckoning. He actually said it was gonna be that terrible. The other thing we're going to look at, Chris, before me and you get into it, is that now a senator is also sponsoring a bill that will allow school boards to arm teachers and other employees. These employees, they would be licensed to carry a concealed weapon and they'd be trained in the use of firearms, Chris. So there's actually a lot going on in Harrisburg right now. And I know you guys, you probably have a lot of questions that you're thinking of right now. Now, James, they just released the budget just a few months ago. Why are they spending almost 700, or excuse me, trying to get a $700 million loan already. Well, yeah, Chris, that's a really good question, and it's something that actually hasn't been answered, answered yet. They claim it's something that occasionally comes during the end of, say, a deficit or a downturn like we had in 2008. And they're just saying that right now, Pennsylvania is just getting around to making up for the economic downturn we had not too long ago. Now, you mentioned this day of reckoning. That, that sounds pretty dark and yeah. grim. <laughs> what exactly pretty dramatic language that? for this? It, it, it's very funny. He said it's a day of reckoning, but then we have other people like uh, Zolby. He's one of the main people out in the Harrisburg Budget Department. He said, I don't think it's a crisis at all. And another good example that we're using is now the Commonwealth budget. Now, this is a quote from Rob McCord, who's the state treasurer. The Commonwealth has a balanced budget and will be paying its bills on time using the same fiscal management and cash flow tools as it always used. He said that the way to Pascal and Ziegler are using this it's nothing more than political theater so it's already getting a lot of great great opposition from both sides now james the other thing you mentioned was that trying to arm teachers in schools yeah can we really see this happen at the state level do we really see this uh excuse me the congress or excuse me pennsylvania state congress being able to pass such a bill well, it, it's very odd. You know, this comes only two years after the dramatic Sandy Hook shooting that happened in 2012. And that's created sort of a turn towards the American public of feeling that our schools aren't really up to their level. Now, 87.8% of educators, now this is the School Improvement Network, a nationally certified network, say that they believe having an armed officer would improve safety. Now, that's an armed officer. However, 72.4% of them say if this bill would be passed, they themselves would not bring a gun to school. Now, you also have to keep in mind that we've had more school shootings over the, about the last 25 years than we have in a very long time. Since 1980, 137 separate school shootings have occurred, and that's actually equaled 297 deaths of children ages grade 12 and lower. So although there is no clear answer to this, it's clear that something has to be done. And whether this does get passed or not, it's going to bring up some interesting bipartisan conversation and maybe we're going to finally come up for a solution for what's going on in our school systems. Most definitely great stats there, James. Thanks for everything this week. We'll see you again next week. Coming up on Daybreak Construction wraps up on campus. We'll tell you where. And the NFL can't seem to stay out of trouble. The Daybreak Sports Report is coming up. Don't go anywhere.